Hi, Joanne. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So we're going to go straight into the questions. And I want to ask, what career did you do when you were in grade school, high school, and college? Um, so throughout grade school um, and, and high school, mm -hmm. I was a dancer. And honestly, all I wanted to do was dance. Okay. And, what kind um, of dance? I did ballet, jazz, modern, oh, nice. um, Haitian folklore. Oh, all nice. Types. Um, and so throughout high school, until I had to make the decision that you're going to college, um, I, I didn't think I wanted to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. I just knew that was all I lived for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, until uh, my uncle used to come and visit us in Haiti, and he would bring back VHS tapes with all these movies. And I got to watching Fame. Mm. <laughs> and I watched that all the time. Yeah. But if there's anything that made it clear that I will not become a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> it was that movie. <laughs> it was Fame. I just didn't think that um, I would be able to live like, you know, yes. a starving artist. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was pretty clear that, you know, I wasn't going to have the C Misty Copeland's career. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. So... Um, so then I had to really get serious about what I wanted to do. Um, and I didn't really have a clear direction. You mm -hmm. know, um, I, I knew I wanted to be in New York, right? So my top school was NYU. I applied there and I went there. I took an aptitude te test, which I h highly do not recommend ever. <laughs> you know, it's never really in touch with who you who are, you are. Mm -hmm. what you want to do. Um, and so it said I would be good at business. So I applied to the business school at NYU, um, spent four years um, taking only my core business classes and mm -hmm. everything else in the liberal arts school. Um, I ended up being an economics major because um, that was very fascinating to me. But um, I would walk around in school and everyone thought I was from the School of the Arts. So it, it, there yeah, was always yeah, that disconnect. Mm -hmm. Never did they assume that I was at the business school. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, pretty much. That was that, you know, so I, I did have a short stint where I wanted to be an architect. And I still think, you know, that would have probably been a better match, mm -hmm. though I think I would have ended up doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Anyhow, it would have brought you all back. Yeah. To this. Yeah. So what what did you do? What did you do in college? Like what career did you do in college? Well, like I said, I was in the, at the business school mm -hmm. um, or after college. Right. Yeah. After college. So um, when it came time to work. I did join. Uh, at, it, it, all, the interview season is always the worst time for me because I never know what I want to do. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so I did work for a public accounting firm for about a, a year. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I really don't like the work world. I wouldn't <laughs> say what I was doing. And so I went to law school. Okay. And again, I went to law school because I could. Mm -hmm. That was because I was you know, drawn or, or very yeah. much. Um, so I went to law school, and I went to law school for three years down in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I've been, I practiced as an attorney for 18 years oh, before wow. I made the switch to Chinese medicine. Okay. Um, and I studied Chinese medicine on the nights and weekends for eight of those 18 years. So what, what was the draw for Chinese medicine? Well, you know, it's very interesting because um, when I applied to Chinese medical school and started, I had not experienced one acupuncture session. All right? Interesting. And it's, it's interesting because a lot, you hear a lot of stories of acupuncturists that they, you know, had a very a great healing experience mm -hmm. with Chinese medicine. And that's what drew them to the medicine. Um, and sometimes I think that's not my story, but in hindsight, I think it is very much my story. Even yeah. though I didn't experience Chinese medicine, I had experienced it through the study of the philosophy, okay. right? And so I think many times I, ha I was in this existential angst of what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. is it aligned, whatever. And I ended up, you know, studying uh, on my own um, more about Eastern philosophy, and that really drew me. Um, and so that is really, you know, and I started practicing yoga, getting into a lot of activities that were more to focus on me and centering myself. Um, and so that's what led me. And I discovered that there's this whole medicine based on this philosophy, which is incredible. 
Um, and so that's how I ended up going to Chinese medical school. Yeah, that's interesting that you did not have any interaction before with Chinese medicine. I, when I was a teenager, I woke up one morning and I was urinating blood. And I told my mother, and she's like, go to school, we'll figure it out. We went to the doctor after, and she was like, the doctor, the nurse said, you need to go to the hospital because someone was in here with this and, and they died. And I told my mother what the nurse told me because I was like, why would she tell me this? I'm a child. Like, and um, my mother was like, we're not listening to that. And she had a friend who was my grandfather's friend who was into homeopathy. And I went and I saw him and he did reflexology on my feet. And when he hit my kidneys, I almost kicked him in the face. Yeah. And he gave me some homeopathy pills. I went home. I took them. The next morning, I woke up, and it was like it was gone. And I was like, there's this whole other thing mm -hmm. about your body and how the right herbs can help heal. So that was like my introduction into to holistic into medicine. And holistic medicine. Exactly. Interesting. So then you studied. So then you studied for eight years. How long is the study? It's a four-year full-time program, okay. but I was working full-time mm -hmm. as an attorney, so it took me close to eight years. Okay. And so explain, what is acupuncture? Um, acupuncture is one therapy, uh, part of a panoply of other therapies that constitute um, Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you, you know, I, I like to introduce acupuncture by introducing really what whole is, holistic medicine yeah. is um, because um, generally, if you think about it, the a ancient Chinese, um, they observed nature. Yeah. Um, and from that acute observance of nature and how um, nature evolves and creates, um, saw a reflection of that within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's at the base, yeah. right? And so... Um, we, in a, in a, it, it's the idea of the macro in the micro, mm -hmm. right? And so any, any way, even the way that we function parallels a lot with, with what you observe in nature, yeah. right? Um, that leads to this understanding also that there are, you know, the, the mic macro is reflected in the micro, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we know that even from Western science perspective, right? DNA is yeah. the blueprint for your entire being, and exactly. it's in each and every cell, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm, I'm getting at the holistic thinking mm -hmm. behind, right? So, which is why sometimes, you know, in acupuncture, if you notice, we, if you have backache or knee ache and pain, we're not needling the area, area of no, pain, right? Exactly. Um, and, and because the body has so many microsystems, mm -hmm. right? that reflect the whole, and we use uh, these microsystems to help heal the whole, mm -hmm. right? So that's one, another aspect. Then you take it down to the fact that with that type of thinking, and I always like to make sure that people understand, any medical system is rooted in a philosophy, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to be very firm and understand that philosophy in the application of your medicine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it, the... Chinese medicine in general, um, and particularly acupuncture, the idea of that we are, we are functioning and our body knows how to make us whole, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. we are a holistic being. Mm -hmm. And so instead of focusing on breaking down the body in several, just to understand it, which is great, mm -hmm. you know, um, they, they evolved more of a systems thinking. Okay. Right. And so there's different energies that co correspond to different parts of the body, which is why we can affect so much just by needling at the skin level. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that and it's that constant systems. You cannot think and focus only on one point. You constantly have to think of the upstream and the downstream. OK. Right. And you constantly have to think how things interact. Right. And so that is at the crux of holistic and beyond Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I like to emphasize that because oftentimes holistic is used very, you know, anything that's natural is yes. holistic, right? Yeah. But you can practice a holistic medicine um, and still have, a, what you know, a reductionist 
um, approach, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you take, for example, the booming of the supplement industry, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a reductionist thinking in a exactly. way. We, we zero in on what is affecting one part mm -hmm. of the equation, of the biochemical equation, and we flood the body with yeah. it, right? Yeah. So you can, be, you can have a holistic practice and practice, um, you know, ha have a more... And, and the, the parallel to that, or the other side to that, is again, we are all trying to understand the universe. Yes. Okay, no matter, everyone, it, right. Um, and there are several ways to understand the universe, mm -hmm. right? And so from a, a pure, and I won't, I won't say West, Western thinking, in, particularly in the biomedical field, right, because I, 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 I have to be very careful. At, um, there is this idea that you can break down things into its separate parts yes. to understand the whole. Mm -hmm. And that is a way, right? Um, in fact, but on a holistic side, we also understand that there's so many, there's, it's so complex, right? You can go down the rabbit hole, break down as much as you can, but at the end of the day, if you don't see the forest, you're not really understanding the whole. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And you're fixing and tinkering with this, but again, affecting the upstream the and downstream exactly. affecting the whole, right? Um, that, however, is a philosophy of how you approach, how you understand holism or um, it's not science mm -hmm. science is universal yeah right because we tend to get into this a oh, holistic versus modern science mm -hmm. no in fact modern science is revealing uh, there's there's a lot of convergence now that's occurring particularly with what we are able to know and understand more at a molecular level um, to what we understand um, that the ancients understood yeah. holistically. Right? Mm -hmm. So I like to make that distinction, right? And so you can also practice Western medicine and practice it very holistically, yeah. right? F the functional doctors, that's a lot of what they do, right? Mm -hmm. They go back to nutrition and they think about everything, everything that could impact you having that symptom that you're having. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when someone goes to acupuncture and they they say for example like you mentioned they have knee pain and you're looking at the whole system what do they and you talked about needling i know that i know when i tell people about acupuncture the biggest thing they say is like i don't like needles mm -hmm. so can you explain like what needling well, is first of all the yes. needles are extremely thin as you know yeah they're like filiform needles. They're not, you know, your hypodermic needles. Yes. Right? Um, and so, yes, if you're very sensitive, you know, um, you will feel it. But more importantly, you're, I don't think what frightens people as much, well, piercing the skin does frighten people. Yes. But when they experience it, they're shocked at the uh, movement that they feel. Yes. Right? The when energy. I first started going and I was, I had... Um, an acupuncturist, and she was in the process of learning. And actually, I went at a party. That's what it was. Someone threw a like, wellness party. And you could go and have a facial. You could have acupuncture, acupressure, um, and some other things. Like you paid one price, and you get that. And I decided to do acupuncture. And the first time she put the needle in, I felt it travel all the way from my feet up to my yeah. head. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that sometimes is, or, you know, some people experience that doesn't happen very often, but it does, you know, well, you'll feel like an electric shock. Yes. Right? That yeah. scares people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try not to have that happen too often, but it happens. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so because, again, we, you know, we're bioelectrical beings. Yes. And that's what we're impacting mm -hmm. when we place the needles. Right? And so I think that people are confusing it. Like you said, it's not a, it's not a hypodermic needle. It's not no. a needle that is going to go into a vein. It, it goes through, it goes, it doesn't even, it punctures how many layers of skin? Like just. Well, you know, um, again, the level that you needle in has yes. a different impact. Yes. Right. So that's all everything that we we learn and continue to learn mm -hmm. as we evolve mm -hmm. in this medicine, right? Um, so it can go pretty deep. Yeah. But it's so thin. Yeah. Right? And actually, the pain, most of our pain, um, uh, the nerves that re register pain are on the surface level. So yeah. by the time we pierce that, mm -hmm. 
you know, you don't even feel how deep it's going. Yeah. Right? You'll feel the energetics more than you'll feel the, the, the pain. Yeah. Pain from the needle. And is there any, is there any, um, who shouldn't have acupuncture? Okay. Um, so getting back to what we do. Yes. I also like to say, because, you know, a lot of people initially, they come to acupuncture thinking it can really help with pain. And yeah. they're not aware of how much it can work, help with. And it mm -hmm. helps with a lot of internal um, issues. I deal with a lot of mental, emotional issues, yes. right? Um, and all with acupuncture, mm -hmm. right? Can, and so how is that? Um, and so... Getting back to your question, I'm sorry, I have lost a train of thought you just said. Who isn't acupuncture? Oh, who, who should can yeah. acupuncture to help with? Yeah. So I like, what we do is we restore functionality, okay? Oftentimes, by the time you're coming with a symptom, mm -hmm. right, it's your body's signaling system telling yeah. that something's in disharmony, something's mm -hmm. out of whack, all right? And um, usually, you know, it's, it could be lifestyle, it could be diet, it could be a number of things, yeah. right? So the minute you have that first headache, that's just a signal, mm -hmm. right? So um, now if you let that go. fester yeah. and let that go, mm -hmm. then it becomes chronic and it becomes so much harder to readjust. Yeah. So it's, that's why these medicines are, you know, are very recommended because they're preventative yeah. as well, mm -hmm. right? The person will come down, and, and we see patterns. And the patterns can be different um, layers of disease, yes. right? So I might treat um, someone, and I identify the same pattern, but I d identify it early, mm -hmm. versus someone who shares that same pattern and has more chronic issues, yeah. right? But we're going to treat it the same. Mm -hmm. Versus someone who, for example, will I'll have five people come with a headache, and but there'll be five different patterns, yeah. right? And so I have to treat it differently for each type of headache, depending mm -hmm. on the pattern. Because what what the symptom? I mean, a lot of people always say that we um, we treat um, uh, we don't focus on the symptoms; we focus on the root cause. Yes. But actually, you come in, you have a symptom. We're trying to stop. We exactly. Don't have to but yes, the truth in that is that we are looking at what the underlying imbalance is mm -hmm. to treat the symptom. We're not blocking it. Yeah. That's the only difference. Well, that's a major difference, yes. right? So to back, going back to your question, who may not benefit from acupuncture? And I'm not, I think I'm being biased, but I think everyone can benefit from acupuncture, right? The moment there is any type of a disruption. And we often, like I know I, there are often, um, you know, women issues that often come up. And I'm, I'm always referring my clients as well. So for women's health and also for IVF. IVF, they also recommend after you have an implantation that you should go and have um, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the women's health aspect and like the, the benefits to women, not just thinking about conception, but just like you mentioned, as a whole. As a whole, yeah. yeah. So um, it's women's health um, is probably, again, we're going back to thinking of how we innately know how to take care of ourselves, yeah. or at least that's what we're tapping into, mm -hmm. right? Reinforcing or reminding your body, yeah. right, how to. And so I like to remind, um, there's a huge area in Chinese medicine um, focus almost solely on women's health mm -hmm. around the women's menstrual period, for example, yes. right? And so that's why when you come in as a woman, right, there's so many questions about your menstrual period, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're menstruating or later on as yes. well, right? Um, because that we all know that experience also impacts your experience um, when it's supposedly over, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the menstrual period, again, it's a way that we sync with nature's cycles. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that sometimes in our society we shun it, right? Our menstrual period is always a problem, yes. right? And when we should really be getting a lot of insight from mm -hmm. it, right? And so usually with women's health, no matter what they're coming in for, 
we ask questions around the menstrual cycle because that is a barometer yes. of how well the woman is doing, right? Yeah. In so many other aspects of their lives, as well, you know, as in their mental emotional. So, um, you know, women will come. I, I encourage younger women also, the moment there's irregularities in their menstrual period, mm -hmm. to try and treat it holistically, yeah. right? There, you, we shouldn't be having a lot of pain um, you know, or irregular periods, usually irregular periods. I mean, there was a study that I remember when I was in Chinese medical school that um, there was a, that I came across where there was a huge correlation between young women who had um, um, longer cycles mm -hmm. right, and more time between periods um, and their, um, in their incidence of insulin resistance. Oh, Right, so yeah. that's already telling you Something. what's coming down exactly. the pike. Exactly, and if you just, you know, we usually we prescribe um, birth control pills, right? Mm -hmm. Just prescribed to them so that they can regulate it. Yes, but we haven't addressed the issue, the, the issue, issue, which will probably rear its head in different ways later on. That's fascinating, right? Yeah. So um, the the menstrual period, I like to remen remind people that. It, women, that it's the cycle that men don't have, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's really a, for, a fortunate, um, I look at it as very, you go through different periods of your period. The, for example, you take PMS, right? Feeling very irritable, you know, around the period. Mm -hmm. and, and really, if the, it's usually because there's a cycle, there's a creative cycle yes. to our cycle, mm -hmm. right? And so... Um, there's there's a, a yin yang to our cycle, yeah. right? There's a time um, where we move towards ovulation, where it's a f extreme creative um, uh, um, period mm -hmm. in in that cycle, and mm -hmm. then afterwards there's that period of regeneration, of Girl. you know where we really yes. have to go within or be a little bit more. But we're going, you know. Yes. We have to produce, 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 yes. produce. And so, of course, we're pissed. Yeah. At that time, right? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's that type of thinking that we yeah. really have to re reintegrate um, in women's health, I think, generally. And with, I think that's um, what holistic um, practices probably um, do well. Yeah. And I, I, you practice community acupuncture. Can you explain what community acupuncture is? I like that model. Yes, um, I fell in love with the model. I was in school when I was in school. Um, it was clear that you know, you the, our only option was to open our practice, yeah. right? Um, and then I came across a woman out west. Her name is Lisa Lolder. Um, she basically started the community acupuncture um, model here yeah. in the U.S. And she, you know, she was a Bryn Mawr graduate, went to Chinese medical school. And then um, she basically said she realized she was going to graduate with this tremendous medicine. Mm -hmm. And her only options was either to work for a, uh, you know, a government program mm -hmm. where, you know, they could get a grant to be able to um, treat as many people, people as possible. possible. Mm -hmm. Or it was a high-end luxury exotic Right, spa defied exactly. service. And she was like, you know, I come from a middle class family. I want to be able to treat people, my friends and family. Yeah. That's how she yes. worded it. And so um, I need to find a business model that will work. Right. And so um, that's how the community, um, the, the idea is. And, and it's, but it, it ends up being much more than that. Yeah. Right because um, we're able to treat more people at the same time, mm -hmm. but we're also with, um, you know, we, with who we're treating yes. at the same time. And w the people who are being treated are with each, each other, other, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't know how many times, and this, is, this doesn't come from me, this comes from patients who, they said they notice that there's a calming effect yeah. just by the fact that there's other people that are going into that relaxation state at the same time. So I do think there's a, you know, it's like a coherence of, of um, frequency yeah. that occurs. Yeah. And so I think that has a major healing impact as well. Yeah, it's true, being in community. Yes. And, and 
I know when I started, I was seeing um, a solo practitioner and I was the only person in the room. And that model kind of stuck around for a while um, with other practitioners that I saw over the years. And it's like you mentioned, the, the, it was cost prohibitive for a lot of lot of people it's a, it can be upwards of $175 and higher for people who will come to your home um and the community model allows for you like you mentioned to have a room full of people who are yeah. in community with each other in healing yeah together and, together. and that provides you the op the luxury to be able to treat more than one person at a time so you don't have to charge $225 yeah. per person yes yeah. And also, um, the added benefit for the practitioner, right? Um, you know, a practice is a practice. Yeah. You have to see people yes. to get better exactly. at your craft. Right? Exactly. And so that has been a gift to me. Yeah. The community model has been, I learn from my patients yeah. every day. Yeah. I think right? they, and I, I, Sorry, I, I think the, I think the the saying is like you have to do 10,000 hours yes. to be considered an expert. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and, and I've done <laughs> way, more, way more. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, and 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 again, the the medicine, the the philosophy is rich, right? Um, but it's it's the practice of this medicine is you have to go deeper and deeper into the philosophy, right? So it's a thousand years old. Of, yes. Um, and it, there, there are no new books that are overturning other books. It's mm -hmm. the, you know, the classic, we still consult the classics, yeah. or we try, right? So, it, you know, it's the deepening of the practice yeah. that is important, and that's what I learned, you know, th um, through my practice. And so you, there's a practice of actual needling and acupuncture, but then there is a component of it that can require or sometimes needs herbs, yes. Chinese herbs. Yes. And can you speak to that aspect? Yes. So, um, again, I think, you know, um, many, many traditions around the world um, have an herbal practice, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think the Chinese herbal practice is unique in the sense that um, they, uh, th th their formulas are usually a combination of herbs. Yeah. And that's usually because they're, address, again, addressing. But at, at the root of herbs is the fact that you're using a whole plant yes. to treat a whole person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you're not breaking it down, trying to find the active ingredient, and, and, and which your body will probably react to but not recognize. Yeah. There's a difference, yeah. right? And so... Um, I do, though I practice Chinese um, herbal medicine because that's, that was my training, um, I'm very much interested in all types of, you know, I, I also am interested in, in just general foods for people to, to, to um, bring foods mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. you know, really think of what they're getting from their yeah. foods and, and, and improving the quality of their food, yeah. right, to heal. Yeah, I know you had mentioned to me several times that I really look, when I go to the farmer's market, that's where I should be looking to make sure that the foods that I'm eating coincide with what's in season see, as yes. a, and, and also as organic as we can get it without, you know, the processing in the stores for organic. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because, you know, life begets life. Yes. Right? The plants and everything that are around us are there to help us thrive, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so we, that's what we're tapping into, yeah. right? And we've, we, unfortunately, we've gone too far to where, you know, I always tell my patients, if, if, if your food doesn't rot, it's not food. Yes, right? exactly. Um, so if it's packaged, whatever, you know, um, they, it, if it has a marketing a budget, yeah. it's not yeah. good for you. Yes, I don't exactly. care how, how much exactly. it says it has all these, you know, yeah. beneficial. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's really fascinating. And I often refer a lot of my um, pregnant people to you um, because there are so many ways in which acupuncture helps in pregnancy, like from anything from sciatica to breech babies. Yep, yeah. to morning sickness. To morning sickness. Yeah, and so, you know, 
Uh, we talked a little bit about just general women's yes. health before, and, and particularly around pregnancy, we help everywhere from trying to get pregnant to, and I always tell um, my pregnant patients that the first trimester is a good time to come on a mm -hmm. regular basis, but then if your second trimester is going well, just be with baby. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, they usually come back third trimester when we're getting ready to prepare them for labor. Yeah. And so, um, and the second trimester, if you have aches and pains, um, uh, unbearable morning sickness, anything that is disruptive, definitely we can help. Yeah. But if you are fine, enjoy that second trimester. Yes, exactly. Be with, be one with your baby yeah. before, you know, the That's, separation. Yeah. That's wonderful. And then, so you also have a, a program in Haiti. Can you talk a little bit about? Well, so, um, you know, one of the things, uh, when I was in, just shortly after Chinese medical school, mm -hmm. I was fortunate to study with a master teacher, Dr. Richard Tan, which I owe so much to, mm -hmm. um, and which taught me to understand the holistic underpinnings of yes. my medicine. Because even in Chinese medical school, I have to admit to you, halfway through, I was about to quit. Mm. Okay, there's one yeah. teacher that I owe him for keeping me there because I wasn't connecting the philosophy with the practice, yeah. right? And it's because we are already so very trained in that logic one-to-one -one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that even, you know, we have this wonderful philosophy here and then when it came down to the practice, I wasn't seeing the results that yeah. I thought I should be seeing. So, um, a lot of the people in the community acupuncture space were talking about this master teacher called Master Tan. Um, and I, as soon as I took a class with him, I, you know, took as many classes as I could. Unfortunately, he passed um, a couple of years, about five years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and his senior teachers have continued to um, propagate the lineage and the teachings. Yeah. And, and I've gotten very involved with them. And one of their side programs is a program where they go, they started off in Cambodia, mm -hmm. where they go for about a week and they treat as many people as they can, yeah. right? Um, with the balance method um, acupuncture. Um, and so they had actually gone to Haiti. And this is it's not something I had instigated. Mm -hmm. It's another doctor acupuncture out of Martinique mm -hmm. um, that had gotten them in contact with a, a, a community organization in a, in a mountain town of Tiot in Haiti. And so the first mission, I didn't go, and I've been to the two other missions after that. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we go and f we go for one week, and we treat as many hundreds of people. Yeah. And what I like about it is that we are introducing this type of low-cost medicine. Yeah. I wish we could be there more. Mm -hmm. And given that I am from Haiti, I, I have plans of being there more. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> wonderful. Um, but we're trying to figure out ways to grow. And, and I see even just growing the holistic ideas mm -hmm. and propagating that. I mean, we um, the, the group tries to um, teach other um, medical professionals, yeah. basic um, balance method acupressure, right, mm -hmm. that they can take back to their communities. So we're trying to grow that as well and trying to figure out how we can propagate. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. That sounds really great. Um, so now we're going to move on into the next segment, right? And this segment is just about inspiration and like what inspires you. Um, and the first question is, what is your favorite scent? Okay, um, I like burning herbs. <laughs> mm, like sage Almost or? Sage, oh my God, Palo Santo. Oh, Palo Santo, okay. Um, moxie, moxie. moxie. I don't yeah. do that much moxie bush in the community room in my clinic um, because some people don't like it, mm. believe it or not, I'm, I'm shocked. But <laughs> some yeah. people don't. Um, but I do it when I do it. It just takes me somewhere else. I just love it. I just love the t the smell of uh, burning, burning herbs. Herbs. That's that's interesting. I've never had that one before. But I could see that. I do like this the smell of Palo Santo. Did you hear that? I I, I went to buy Palo Santo in um, in a store, and the woman told me that they're endangered. 
endangered. Yeah. Oh. I found that out just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so I feel really <laughs> bad now. I Is won't. that what they burn in Catholic churches? No, no. they is... burn... Um, oh, my mother I used like to burn too. it all the time. Oh, I, I, I can't. You don't like it? Oh, <laughs> being in Catholic that. churches and when they would burn it. Oh, what is it? I forgot what it is, but it also is for spirits. Yeah. For... <laughs> For a ghost, that that's a story for another that's time. Time. I'll tell you that. I'll tell <laughs> okay. you that story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's a book, film, or show, or podcast that's inspiring you right now? Oh, right now I'm re- I'm reading this book called Entangled Life, mm-hmm. and it's really about the secret life of mushrooms, mm-hmm. right? And that whole mushroom world. Um, you know, it's getting a a lot of attention these days with the hallucinogenic yeah. aspect of it, but um, there's also um, I just started the book, but I think it's pretty pretty fascinating, and that's that's what I'm engulfed in right now. Okay, and what's a quote that inspires you, or something that you think of daily? I knew you were gonna ask me that, <laughs> and I I actually uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of. Um, um, Lauren Hill. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm like, let me listen to more Lauren Hill. I yeah. know I'm going to get yes. this. Quote right there. <laughs> but really, the quote that really comes to me, particularly based on what we were talking, I don't know who it's from, um, but it's um, knowledge is understanding differences and separation. Wisdom is understanding similarities and um, connection. Mm, I like that one. That's a really good one. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So this next segment is where I would like you to share your birth story, the story of like when you gave birth to your daughter, just everything about your pregnancy and labor and delivery. So I have one daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pregnant with her midway through Chinese medical school. Oh, wow. And so I was already imbued in, you know, the holistic births. Mm-hmm. And I had to have a natural birth. And, uh, I did everything. Um, um, I took a, I think it was a Bradley method class. Okay. That was very instrumental because mm-hmm. um, she focused, I think she was a doula, mm-hmm. and she focused on preparing us for the birth process, yes, right? And mm-hmm. really, the politics of the birth exactly. process, which exactly. I think is very important, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so I must say I followed it to a T. Um, my mom, who had flown up to, to assist the birth, she was pulling her hair out because <laughs> my husband and I were laboring at home. Mm-hmm. We would not, <laughs> not go in. Not go in we're until not going it too was early. four minutes apart, <laughs> you know. And my mom's like, she was, um, but we did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah. And I made it um, to Lenox Hill Hospitals where I had my daughter. Um, what was surprising about labor? Was there anything surprising to you? Well, the woman, who, the doula who taught the, um, she said that there would be one period, they call it transition, uh-huh. where no matter what they offered you, you would take. Yes. <laughs> it's the shortest period. But it's the most intense. It's the most intense. It's when you're going from eight centimeters to fully dilated. Okay. Yes. Well, so even when we got to the hospital, I wouldn't let them hook me up. Okay. Right? Again, I was listening. Listening. Following. following. Great. And so my husband and I were like walking back and forth, you know, in the hallways. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think it was, you know, Anyhow, I'm not going to get into details, but by the time it was, I think I was going to transition. I think my OBGYN, as much as she really understood how having a natural birth was to me, I was, and she was on board, right? Um, I think at the end, she would have felt more comfortable had I gone, you know, another route. Because Mm she, I found out afterwards that she went to speak to my mom. Are you sure? She's ready, you know, she can, she do this, right? And so I mentioned to her that, you know, when I went to, I had gone to the bathroom and I saw some blood streaked and she was like, you saw blood or something. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't even know if it's normal or not. Yeah, normal. it is normal. It's it usually a bloody show. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
All right, well, she made it sound like, um, well, you know, we, we need, I think we're, we need, they were pulling out to give me the um, epidural. epidural. Yeah. And, you know, when they tell you, you know, the moment yes. they say something could happen to the child, yes, obviously, of course, right? And not to mention you're going in transition. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so my, my husband actually had stepped out for a minute to go get my mom something to drink. Mm -hmm. And he comes back and he, he's, he's like, what's going on? What's going yes. on, right? Thank God that I had already been dilated to eight. And so they couldn't even give me the epidural. Great. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so... And I had her, and immediately had her. She, you know, had her on my skin. It's great. It was, it's, you know. Yeah. I saw her. I always tell her. I saw her. She has long fingers. She still mm -hmm. does. And I saw the little ET fingers. <laughs> like this. <I> was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but it was good, beautiful. So yeah. I mean, I you know, the, that's that's great because the thing about it is that Lenox Hill is not a hospital for natural birth. They, they don't see that a lot. You can have a natural birth there, but it's not something that they see as part of their Interesting. regular, normal routine. See, and I so, loved my OBGYN yeah. mm -hmm. um, because she was also, yeah, she was been, been my OBGYN since, um, since college. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, she was very, gr she was great at C-sections. Of course. You know, she was phenomenal. But that's what OBs are, right? They're surgeons, so yeah. 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 So, so they're great at them. So that's their skill set. If something set. had gone wrong, I was in good hands. Yes, that's true. But that, that is also that hospital um, is part of, you know, years ago when you heard um, Too Posh to Push, that was uh, uh, women on the Upper East Side the upper <laughs> did not push their babies out. They had C-sections a lot of the times. I had a really great OB when I was um, working in um, – hotel and hospitality, and it wasn't until I got laid off that I discovered being a doula, and I went into his office for a checkup, and I was sitting there, and I had looked at the pictures before that he had, he had albums, and it wasn't until then that I picked it up and I started looking, and every single picture he had on scrubs, and like he was just, it was out of the ER, and I was just like, yes, this is what he does. Wow. If I wanted to have a natural birth, I couldn't do it with him because that's not what he does. Yes. He does surgery. So, yeah, it's funny how those those things you gave birth then. And how long ago was that? She's 13 now. So, yeah, 13 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> they are definitely, that's not something that they're really used to. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for oh, sharing. Thank you. It was I wonderful it. to have you here. I told you it'd be light, easy, breezy. Uh, it's great talking to you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And good to see you outside of acupuncture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's great to have you here. <laughs>